What's up everybody? My name is Zach Tellender. I am a Transparent Labs sponsored athlete, a weightlifting coach, and I was a competitive weightlifter myself. The goal of this video is to deliver my biggest piece of information that will help with your squat performance overall just strength performance in the gym. I personally was able to take my squat from virtually nothing to 510 pounds, which for somebody who's as long and lanky as myself was something that I thought was never possible. And this style of squatting, this way of thinking about the squat was the thing that changed it for me. My sport, the sport that I have competed in and coached in is Olympic weightlifting. And I think there's a lot of uh, aspects of that that can be transferred into the everyday athlete, somebody who wants to get particularly stronger legs, but in general stronger when we use things like the barbell back squat, barbell front squat, even the overhead squat, and a ton of different forms of the squat just in general. The two things that I'm gonna focus on here uh, is one, range of motion, and two, balance. So balance, well, let's start with balance. Balance is the use of uh, both the knee extensor, which will be your quad or just your knees, uh, and then your hip extension. So usually your glutes, hamstrings, low back. We want to have a balanced squat that can optimize use of both of those. The other thing I want to talk about is depth or range of motion. And when we optimize range of motion with balance, we have the best possible squat in my opinion. What do I mean by those things specifically? Well. Starting with balance, it's usually, I, I like to think about the feet first, but then we can think about the joints. So what I want in the bottom of a squat, I wanna be able to feel that our toes can claw the floor. So with a lot of times people will get down in a squat and their toes will start floating, okay? This is not balanced. Or they'll get down in a squat and everything will be forward and their heels start coming in like this. That's not balanced either, okay? So that's our, actual balance in our feet, but particularly we want to look at the balance between use of the knee and the hip. So if we have a, a full depth squat, which our marker is going to be hip crease below knee, there are two ways in which people can mess this up. They can either put too much into their knees or they can put too much into their hips. So here's what, what it looks like if we have an imbalanced squat with too much into the knees. I don't have very good uh, ankle mobility, but you'll usually see people with good ankle mobility have this, but right here. This is probably more imbalanced towards the knee. And you can see because the proximity of my torso angle to my femur angle, that's, that's a telltale sign, something like this. So if, in full speed, if we're squatting, it might look something like this, right? The opposite of that, is too much in the hips. The thing that we can actually look at is the knee track, how far the knee tracks in front of the toes. But basically, if my knees don't really track in front of my toes and I start shifting everything back here, but I get depth, I've got the range of motion, hip crease below knee, I'm a little bit imbalanced here. There's no knee working, right? So we wanna be able to balance both of those things. So what I like to do is start with a freestanding squat or an air squat we want to focus on the bottom position. So those are our things. Hip crease below the knee, use of the knee, and use of the hip. We can tell by proximity of the joints to other joints. So what we're going to do here is set up sh uh, feet about shoulder width apart. We're going to get our forearms right around our elbows above our knee, just like this. And this is the balance I want in my feet. We might be able to squat here and be fine, but then when we get lower, we'll shift this way or we'll shift that way. So what we're doing by setting ourselves up here is we're trying to find that pressure in our feet and maintain it as we squat down. So I had to adjust a little bit and shift back here, but I think right here is a pretty balanced position for me. Hip crease below knee. And as I stand, I have active use of the quads, active use of the hips. Okay, what we're not looking for is if, let's say, I don't set up like this and I just kind of start sitting and I might fall back like that. Okay, this position right here is something that I would love for most people to just get comfortable in. Even if you don't intend on squatting heavy or deep or whatever, I believe 
truly believe that this is a worthwhile thing to work on. The deep squat, freestanding. I have heeled shoes. I would like you to be able to do it without them. Okay, so this is step one right here. If that's challenging to you, and if it's not possible for you to do, what you wanna do is find an upright or something that's like sturdy into the ground, usually like a squat rack. Hold on to that, allow it to, allow yourself to get down to that depth, right? Holding onto that upright and then work yourself into that position, okay? Work yourself into that position. Now we're in that balanced squat. From here, we're actually gonna go to our box, but I just have plates set up. And this is a very low box. Most times when people box squat, it's right at about parallel, uh, maybe slightly below parallel. But what we're trying to do is set up so that we don't have to worry about hitting our range of motion. So 50% of what we were worried about in the beginning, we don't have to think about. So now all we think about is what? Balance, okay? So we're here. If I need balance, I can't stand up from here. It's too much, it's too much back here. This would be too hip dominant. Okay, I can't, this is not a very good looking squat. If I get up here, well, I'm on my toes, everything's forward, there's too much in my knees. So we wanna try and find from this position, that solid bottom. Look at that range of motion, hip crease below the knee without even trying. And from here, I don't have to change anything, I can just stand, okay? You'll know you're not doing it right if I say, if someone was to say stand and you have to go up. Now. We can work on this, right, by doing just that. We sit down to this, we relax, just sit and relax. Posture up, wiggle into position, hands forward, this usually helps, and stand, okay? We can now upgrade to something like a kettlebell. My favorite way of holding a kettlebell is in this goblet style, but I actually hold it by, I think it's called the bell, rather than here. Okay, so I will hold it like this. And again, sitting down, we can come probably try and relax here. Lean forward, find a balance. Now if someone says go, I can just stand. As we advance, we can then go to the barbell for a front squat. So what we're gonna do is the same exact thing we've been doing. Get down here, sit, organize, and stand. Okay, now, this is what I really wanted to get to, was the back squat. If I could get rid of one way that everyone back squats in, you know, everyday gyms, it is this kind of quarter squat, not really understanding the, the proprioception of the squat, not really having a purpose to it, but just like knowing that you should do it, so you do it anyways, right? So the guy who unracks the barbell, usually has 45s on the bar and just kind of does this thing, just bends the knees a little bit and stands, okay? Now that might be balanced, but it has no range of motion. And if we ask for range of motion, it's gonna be a shit show. So if I could get rid of that, that would be my main mission. And this is what, this is how I think when I, when I uh, attack that one thing. Just like what we were talking about before, we wanna be able to find this position, right? This balanced squat, okay? My way of thinking about the back squat is attacking that position and kind of ignoring the rest, which, which may, may feel really weird for some people, right? Your chest might cave a little bit. Your back might round a little bit. But what you're doing when you push that range of motion is you're getting these muscles in your legs much stronger, much more well equipped to be able to, to continue training. It may seem like it's dangerous, right? But remember that the dose makes the poison, okay? The squat is not a dangerous movement. It's the way that you load it. It's the, the, the frequency in which you lift it uh, and, and it's the intensity. All of those factors can drive injury, not the movement itself. If you're smart about those factors, you will not get injured. So we're actually gonna step away from this. We're not even gonna use these anymore. For the purpose of this video, I want you to think about not so much the squat, rather the position that we're aiming for. So my mindset here is, again, and, and what I like to do is kind of this mid bar position. So not way up here, not way down here. But what I'm doing is just aiming for that position that I was in before, okay? 
And if I have to adjust, I adjust, I can shift back or whatever. But now look at that range of motion. And then I'm just gonna stand from there. What I'm not doing is that example that I gave before, the guy who kind of comes in, he's like, <clears throat> right? We're trying to develop this robust back squat from ground zero. And I'm telling you the mindset of this is the most important thing. So I'm just aiming for that spot. There we go, in the spot, and I stand. Aim for that spot, and I stand. And I usually implement a pause on every single rep until I get good at this. What you guys are gonna notice is like an incredible pump in your legs, okay? Uh, and, and the development of your adductors and your quads all of these muscles will be so robust compared to that squat that I had, I had shown before. And the beautiful thing of this is, like, when you start, you can do this with a barbell for sets of 10 to 20 reps, and you will get an incredible workout. And then as you go and you progress, you just progressive overload, like we all know. That's really um, the, the main mission that I want to, to give to everyone else. This has been the biggest difference maker to myself and most people that I have coached. And I genuinely think that if people give this a shot, it will change their training uh, in, in such a positive way. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Those are my biggest tips as far as squat performance goes and just leg strength and general strength performance in the gym. That's my biggest tip. And uh, if you want more, check out the Transparent Labs YouTube channel. So subscribe there, or you can check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash or my Instagram, coach underscore ZT.